What's going on, y'all? I, I got I to gotta talk about this incident or at least the sentencing because this has been a big topic, right? This has been a big topic. All day long, I've been thinking about this. People coming after me, people mad, you name it. It's all going down because of the sentencing of Amber Geiger and this 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 case of uh, ex-police officer going and I say ex, she would I guess they fired her after obviously she was a cop when she did it. They fired her. She wasn't on duty when she did it. If y'all don't know about this, go look it up. But she went into a man wrong house, thought he was an intruder, shot the man, killed him. He's dead. He's gone. He ain't never coming back. Unfortunately. Now, what's really getting me is that she was charged with secondary murder. I initially said in my video, I thought that they overcharged her. I thought it should have been manslaughter. But she got charged with secondary murder. But they only gave her 10 years. I thought she should have got at least 15 years. They gave her 10 years in prison. People are protesting. Everybody's outraged. She's a racist. His, his brother comes out and hugs the girl, forgives her, was the, most, was the most powerful thing I've seen. People mad at him. He's a traitor. He a coon. I mean, ladies and gents, this is getting out of control. This is out of control. Let me give you my thoughts on this, and then we'll move forward. Again, I thought she should have got a little more time because another person is dead, and she did miss a lot of signs, and she was negligent, and, and, and it could have been preventable if she would have done a, a few more things correctly. Now, she doesn't deserve life based on the principles and the precedent that has been set in our country that you don't give a person life just because they cause the death of another person. That hasn't been standardized at all. I originally had a problem because I felt like they stacked the jury against her. They put six minorities on the jury in a, in a, in a city that wasn't majority minority. So I thought that, that that led to the sentencing. But I do think that justice seems to prevail as if I, you know, like I always believe it to, to happen this way. I feel like it always comes out reasonably in most cases. Some cases they mess up. They send this to the person wrong and get off, whatever. This ain't the case. Um, but the thing that just drew, that drew my heart was to see his brother forgive Amber. And I'm going to say this, man, I, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed and shocked. I'm, I'm shocked to the point of confusion that people will have the audacity to be mad at the boy for forgiving the person who did something bad. To his brother. And when I say did something bad, the only reason I don't want to say certain words because y'all know they'll ban you off here. So what he did to his brother, and some people who mad, they don't even know, they don't even know um the boy. They don't even know Gene. John. I said his name wrong. John. They don't even know both of them. They don't even know him. Never met him. Never talked to him. Never did nothing for him. Never they weren't involved in his life. And now it's such a tragedy. They want to cry. They want to flip out. The world is coming to an end. God needs to intervene. Didn't know the man. His brother, who knew him since he was a kid, I mean, literally, knew him since he was a kid. They both grew up together. He decided to forgive Amber. And they mad at him for forgiving a situation from a person that he knew personally and he loved, and y'all can't even forgive him. And I'll tell you this, people say, they keep comparing the two. Oh, well, Case Steinle, Case Steinle, she, yeah, they y'all want to forgive him, them, the cop, but you don't want to forgive Case Steinle's killer. First of all, two different scenarios, two completely different scenarios. And I think people need to get this clear, especially if you're referring to me in any of this. I didn't forgive nobody. I don't need to forgive anybody. Nobody wronged me. Amber Geiger have nothing to do with my life. I'm just observing what is happening in a case that I have really no involvement in. I'm giving my opinion about it. So I don't, it's not on me to forgive her. She didn't offend me. Um, and just because you forgive somebody don't mean they don't have to go to jail. So she didn't offend me. I'm not forgiving her. His brother forgave her. And I thought that that was a powerful statement of faith, and it's a, it's a it's on display that God can still work miraculous things, because He can change the heart of a young man 
that can put that hurt aside and actually choose forgiveness. That is huge. Some of y'all Christians still can't do it. You're just running around. You got your Bible in your hand. You're speaking in tongues da, 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 all day long, dancing and shouting in the church, doing your thing, and you can't even and you and you and you won't even forgive a person that on the TV. You know what I'm saying? You want to kill a person on TV? She ain't got nothing to do with your life. So that's kind of that's kind of the things that that have been bothering me about the situation, man. Is that why are people outraged? at another man's decision why are people not happy that god is able to reconcile families it's almost like people want the boy to be gone and they want her to be gone like that's gonna make it better two wrongs don't make a right right i mean i'm not saying she's wrong by going to jail she got to go to jail everybody knows that but what i'm saying is that punishing her for the rest of her life hoping ill will on her doesn't make both of them come back it's not going to make them come back. It's not going to make the situation go away. It's not going to make anybody any better. You're just going to harbor hate. One thing that I'm going to preach to y'all on this live stream, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. It's you internalizing what, what, what you want God to do in your life. And if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you don't believe in God, don't worry about nothing I'm saying. You can do whatever you want to do. For the Christian folks, you claim to know God and you claim to be reading your scripture Forgiveness is central in Christianity. It's, forgiveness is, is literally the cornerstone of Christianity. The foundation of who Jesus was, was rooted in sacrifice for forgiveness. Jesus literally died on the cross that your sins may be granted, I mean, or may be forgiven if you choose to go down that route. He died so that you can be forgiven. I mean, that's the whole story of Jesus. If you want to go further and you say it wasn't just word, it was deed. As they were, were beating him to death. I didn't want to say that word, but I got to say it. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, and, and many, many other words. Like he's literally expressing forgiveness as they are hurting him. Not somebody else, as they are, are as they are putting him on the cross and crucifying him. If that's not a honorable level of forgiveness, I don't know what to say to y'all. I don't know what to say. And people want to bring up and act like Jesus said, it's all Christianity is forgiveness. God said in the Bible that if you don't forgive others, God is not going to forgive you. How are you going to go to heaven without forgiveness? God has to forgive you before you can be presented properly to God. You have to be forgiven. Jesus died for your forgiveness. Now, I'll say this and then I'm moving on because I don't want to talk about religion. Forgiveness isn't an utterance out of your mouth. I mean, and not utter forgiveness, but you following Christ and following what Jesus had his plan for you is not just you uttering out of your mouth. Faith is an action. Faith is not a word. It's an action. Your faith in Christ is based on the fruits that you produce. If you say you have faith, your fruits will show it. Ask Peter. Don't talk to me about it. Ask Peter. You shall know them by their fruits. He didn't say you should know them by the word that come out of their mouth. You should know them by their fruits. And when he was talking about faith without works, faith without works is dead. I'm giving scripture. This is not tatology. Faith without works is dead. And, and, and Paul even said, you should know me by my works. All right. And, and, and it's not the it's not the, the the saying of works alone get you into heaven. It's not that's not the case. But your faith is not just a word, it's an action, right? You say you believe in Christ, that's the that's, it's not the word, it's your actions show you. Jesus said in the Bible, um, let me let me think about the scripture I want to use in this case. Jesus said in the Bible, unless your righteousness, not unless your righteousness. He said, taking your cross and follow me. That's one. That's a, that's an action word. There's another scripture that I'm thinking about that I really want to use because I think it's applicable. I'll come back to it. It's a thousand scriptures, but it's one of them in particular that I really want to say. I'll get back to it. All right, let's start, do some of these super chats. Let's see. Leon, thanks so much for the super chat. Peace and love. Let's see. Let me, let me make sure I put this on. Do not disturb. So. The per somebody who ain't never called me before decided to call me when, when I'm on. 
on live. Let's see. I can share so much about this, but uh, Botham brother actually showed um, to live by Christ teaching, but even church folks was mad. Finally, someone practiced what they believe and people still mad. What? I agree with you, bro. Like That's the thing that bothers me is that literally people that are pastors are like, they're not pastors. I've seen people that, who came to Christians, right? I haven't seen a pastor do it yet, but I know they out there. They out there ready to do it now. They are literally, see, let me tell you how God works. That young man has preached a message that has literally, it, it, can, it didn't completely change his brother's death. But God was even glorified in, in a loss that he had. You, you don't know how many people were saved by listening to that boy forgive a person who hurt his brother. Like people are starting to really look at their faith and say, dang, what am I doing? I, I honestly, the God's the God truth, I believe that. People are starting to look and say, what kind of God is he serving that, that he can be in a position to forgive somebody like that? There must be some to God. Maybe I'm not reading my Bible enough. Some people are curious. That young man has done more in one sentence because he's acting out his faith. He's be ye separated. He's doing something that only the power of God can cause you to do. He's not just giving lip service. He walked over and hugged that girl. Don't care what his parents think. He hugged that girl. Those kind of things will cause more people to come to Christ than you sitting behind a pulpit chucking and jiving, asking for an offering plate every five minutes. And then, and then when, the, when the rubber meets the road, you got the nerve to come on TV and criticize them and say, I don't know if I would do that. That's not godly of you to say that. You can, I mean, I can say that you be honest and say, I don't know if I would do that, but that's the right thing to do. I don't know how I feel if somebody hurt, but it was an accident. So, if somebody maliciously did it, you know, they just took him in there, drugged him and did all kind of stuff to your family member, did something really crazy. It would be even more difficult to forgive. But you are supposed to forgive. Now, forgiveness comes in different ways. You don't got to go hug him to forgive him. But it, it, he needed to hug her. He didn't need her to hug him. He needed to hug her to let that go in his chest. That's what forgiveness is. But but we we I, let me tell you this. Who's protesting right now? I want y'all to look on the news. Look at who protested. I don't know why we doing the protesting. When, 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 when we should be actually celebrating the life of this young man that lost his life. So if you believe in God and, and they thought um, he was a good man, he went on to heaven. He went on to glory. He, 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 he no more pain, no more suffering. He didn't want on to meet Jesus. He gone. It ain't no use of you running your mouth at this point. That brother gone. He went to meet Jesus. If you believe he did, you he was doing what he's supposed to do. And his family know better than anybody else. But only God knows ultimately. But if you you can at least project that in your mind, if you felt like he was doing the right thing, you knew he was saved, he went to meet Jesus. His brother already know he gone to meet Jesus. His brother want to be right with God and wants that girl to go meet Jesus. That right there should, should overtake anything else in this trial. Don't be mad. I mean, you can be mad at the girl, which I don't I don't I don't blame people for being mad at her. But he went to meet Jesus. He's in a better place now. That's how I look. He's in a better place. He if he was alive today, he don't want y'all moping around. He don't want you protesting. I'm not. I'm, this is my opinion. I don't know the man. But but based on Christianity, Christian principles and the fact that when you die, if you go to heaven, you don't want people moping around. You want people to you want people to have access to to the faith and the love and the peace that you had. Your life is gone. This ain't your paradise. This ain't your final destination. Your destination is up there. He just went to the final destination earlier. He just ended the pain and suffering and the, and, and the negativity of being in the flesh early. He gone and he happy. He ain't looking back saying, I wish you didn't kill me. He gone. You know, that's, that's my opinion. But I think that also was, it would be a waste for her to lose her life and her to go down a path of using drugs to kill herself and her family be devastated. What is, the, what is wrong with finding Christ and everybody make, trying to make this situation better? You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see now. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see now. Let's see. My brother. Uh, 
Ulysses, thank you so much for another super chat. People always complain that Christians don't do what they say and preach and believe, but he did steal. Um, let's see. He did steal people mad and judging. Hypocrites and Pharisees. Exactly. I mean, Jesus going when you get to the when you get to the end, you're gonna have you're gonna have to have tough conversations. Everybody will. But limit your tough conversation now while you got a time. You shouldn't be out here, especially if you're a Christian. You shouldn't be out here, even if you don't like what the man did. You got to lay low on this one. Because coming against him is coming against the very principle of God. How many times? 70 times 7. I don't know if y'all remember that. How many times you forgive them? 70 times 7. That means if a person come and offend you every single minute on a minute every day, you got to forgive that person in your heart. Very difficult to do. But Jesus told them to do it. And, and, and coming out on TV and saying that that's wrong or trying to criticize the boy talking about he in a sunken place, there is no way you read your Bible or that your Bible is any, anywhere in your heart. And, and you, you probably want to start reading over it again a couple of times because that's the basic fundamental principles of Christianity. You are not a Christian if you don't believe that. I, I'm going I'm to make this bold statement. I would say... Now I'm not the final say. You and God know where you are. I believe, and I don't. I don't trust people to consider themselves to be Christians, and I and I take them seriously. If if you are literally saying that the boy was wrong for what he did and forgiving that man for what he did to his brother, and also hugging her, and for him to say he didn't want her to do no time in jail, if you think he was wrong, and you claim to be a Christian, you you ain't lining up, man. You can disagree, but you may not think he's wrong. You can say what you might have done, but you can't say the boy wrong because that is in that is biblical. He, I almost wondered did he read the Bible before he said that? You know what I'm saying? Did he say I'm gonna check out every box of what Jesus would want me to do in this situation? And he did it. Let's see, Tina, you are right. Love you. Keep speaking the truth. Somebody said a fellow YouTuber has lost his mind. Um, I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, I, I listen, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this because I'm all about keeping it 100. Y'all know who he is. He tagged me and made mention of my name and said I'm retarded because I literally didn't think he was a Christian because he said Jesus ain't had nothing to do with none of this. And I'm like, oh, if you're not a Christian, then I'm not talking about you. Why are you commenting on something that you're not a Christian? And I guess he think he's a Christian and he came back at me, whatever. I called him on the phone last time we had a disagreement. I tried to go on live, and everybody that followed both of us saw that everybody was messing him. Brain tate him on, brain tate him on, brain tate him on. He never brought me on live. He sit up and make a comment about me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go on his page and do that. He put a story out about me. And then he go make a post and then block comments so nobody can comment. I called him, I, I sent him a message. He didn't respond to my message in the inbox. He's a weenie. Amazing Lucas is a weenie. I just, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna say it. I, I try not to get in conflict with people, but he's a weenie. And if you follow him, good on you. I think I like a lot of his videos, but he's soft and he a weenie. And then I'll tell him to his face when I see him, and I'll put it on Instagram. I can't stand people like that. If you got a disagreement, buddy, me and you, I brought him on my live. I go on his live, he dodging me like a plague. Me and King Face. Then I message the bro. I call him on the phone. I'm like, bro, let's have a conversation. He don't answer the phone. I message him. He don't answer. He block comments. I would call him another word, but I'm gonna move on. Let's see, Ulysses. Uh, thanks so much for the uh, another super chat. If okay, I had to address the person in the comment who said, "Why God won't forgive Satan?" Then that's not the problem. Satan won't surrender and repent. And live and say live God's way. That's the problem with humans. See, this is the thing. People try to say if, if somebody's trying to make the argument that why don't God forgive Satan? Forgiveness for Satan is already there. Satan don't want to be forgiven. That that's like that's like if I say if I, a person did something to my family member and I say I'm gonna forgive you, I already forgave that person. If they don't even want to admit that they did anything wrong to the to the external. I have technically never forgiven them, right? Because I'm saying I forgive you for something they said they never did, right? They are not accepting responsibility for their actions. So technically, to the to, to the face to face, 
the forgiveness didn't happen. But forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is not for everybody to see if you don't want it to be. Forgiveness is for your own self. You feel me? And if somebody continue to live a certain lifestyle and the consequences follow that, that's on them. If, if you say, if you tell a person, I forgive you and I'll let you come stay in my house. And they go, I don't want your forgiveness. I'm not staying in your house. And then somebody go, well, why did you let him stay in your house? It's like, I forgave him. I gave him an opportunity. He don't want to take advantage of the opportunity. The same thing with Satan. Satan didn't want to, don't, don't want to take advantage of the opportunity that God has already given him. He has put himself in a negative position with God in eternity. He don't want to do right. If you read the scripture, he don't want to do right. He is consistently in rebellion. And, and, and some people, and it's funny that people say, why well, God didn't, how do you know what God did? You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest, God could be, God could have done that. That don't mean that people wrote about it. I mean, y'all, some people, they go too far. If you look at the consistency of who God is and what God does, forgiveness has been available and made available to everybody. If you want to come, if you go to hell, some people, they may be lost. They don't know what's going on or they decide not. But if you don't make it to heaven, you are making the decision not to, if that makes sense. You are making the decision not to. It's not because it's not available to you. You're making the decision not to. If I have a job for you and you don't come work on a job, the job is available for you. It's not that the opportunity is not there. You just don't want to take advantage of it. Forgiveness is for you. If you don't want to take advantage of it, that's on you. Let's see. I'm only going to do 30 minutes because I'm in D.C. and I'm about to go to the Trump Hotel and hang out with everybody, all the conservatives. Look at her. Look at her. Trying to look beautiful. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't look be don't look too beautiful. Oh, excuse me. Uh let's see, thank you so much for another super chat. Mm -hmm. Um, last thing. Also, I see people saying black people always forgive. That's such a false statement and narrative. I'm sure blacks not always forgiving or the only ones forgiving. Also, Lucas do seem iffy. Man, he a weenie, bro. He a weenie. But I'm not saying don't follow. I don't care about that. You, I think he made great material. But, I mean, come on, bro. You lost your integrity when you ain't answer the phone and you talk it down on the fake but won't bring me on live, bro. You a, you a mark. But uh, somebody said, let's see, Gustavo said, Amazing Lucas is as soft as a wet flower. It's wet flowers in Baltimore tonight. What's cracking, Brandon? Well, we in D.C. And we're going to be at the Trump tonight. We on the way over there now. So if you if you I don't know how far Baltimore is from 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 the Trump or how far you live in relation to the Trump Hotel, but if you're trying to come, everybody gonna be there. David Harris, I mean, probably all your black favorite black conservatives are gonna be there. Probably other people too. It's not just a black thing, but so happened all the black people are here today. You know what I'm saying? Every black conservative in America, we can't all fly on the same airplane because if you go down, that's half of the population of black conservatives. Now I'm totally joking, but come down to to the to the uh. Trump Hotel is crack lacking You say softer than wet flowers. I say softer than the wet toilet paper. Or I say softer than the marshmallow. One of the two. But that's that's softness, bro. I don't respect people that do that. I don't respect nobody to do that. I don't respect people who secretly record me. Hotel Jesus secretly recorded me last year. I have no respect for him. End of the story. So anybody hear anything or want to know anything, that's what it is. I let it be known, and I'm not touching on it no more. This is the last time you're going to hear me talk about anything saying about Major Lucas, and I'll tell him to his face. Anything about anybody else, I'll tell him to their face. If they, want to, if they want to take it there, if they want to throw hands, we can do that as well. I don't prefer that for them unless they have good medical insurance. But regardless of that, JC, thanks so much for the Super Chat. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate y'all with the Super Chat. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button. Visit the Officer Tatum store. I know I've been talking about this time. I never, I haven't promoted the store. For those of you who don't know, I have a store. The Officer Tatum store. Y'all go on there after the live. Or you go on there if you're done listening to me rant. And it's a special offer at the top of the screen. You get a certain percentage off if you go on there and check that out. Use the promo code FAX. And you'll get the you'll get the discount on the store. All the MAGA stuff on there. The stuff that we create. I don't sell these on there. I'm just wearing this because I'm in D.C. Babe, where my hat at? I think so. It's over there where you at. You want it? Yeah. I'll show y'all a little bit of just a couple things we got. Where um. Uh huh. Where you other one at? Where you? Okay. 
Don't worry about my hair. Jesus still love me. And uh, so this is one of our MAGA hats, 45. I've been wearing this on an airplane. And people look at me, but I don't think they really know what it is. But I know what it is, and I'm supporting the president. I wear this one sometimes, but sometimes when I'm ready to just chill and I don't feel like being bothered by nobody, I wear my, I wear my subdued MAGA. And then here's the one. And this is designed by Corinne. She's sitting right there. She designed these hats, the 45, and then the make the, the keep America great. It's very, very small, man. I mean, so you know you're supporting. It looks good. People can see it, but it don't need to be boom. It's for like. Moms. I think it's for like. I think it's for more so like women, moms, people who don't feel like fighting people, and they just want to go to the grocery store and support the president. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what it is. Even dudes. I'm not saying men can't wear it. I mean, I'm not saying you soft or nothing, but. I wear it all the time, obviously because it's my merch, but <laughs> but also, man, I don't feel like arguing with people. I don't feel like nobody's spitting my food. I don't feel like dealing with people being stupid over Trump with Trump derangement syndrome. I don't want to have to knock somebody out when I'm just trying to have a, a good time, you know? And so we make merch like that. The store got all kind of stuff, man. We got sweaters. We got we got all kind of stuff. So let me put my mag, mag hat back on. Matter of fact, I just wear this one. This one fits. This fits a lot better. Okay, let's see. You got another one. My boy, um, Ulysses. I hope I'm saying your name right. Probably not. Blame that public school education. Don't don't charge it to my heart. <laughs> Off topic question. What's the difference between police and sheriff's department? Or are they the same? I'm trying to decide between the two or fire department. So the, 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 the difference between... They're very similar. Let me start out by saying that. They all are law enforcement officers. They all are certified in the state with the same certification, the same basic training. They do different trainings because it's different jurisdictions. So police officers work in a municipality. So a city, uh, 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 I guess a um, functioning city, an incorporated city, police officers work within the city. They have a city council. The chief is, a, is, is appointed by the city council or hired by the city council, all of that. The sheriff is the county. So the outskirts, the unincorporated areas, is the sheriff's department. And the sheriff's department is an elected position. So the sheriff is elected. And then, like Sheriff Joe Pio, you know, you get reelected, reelected, and they can say whatever they want. They're, they're technically like an elected official, so they can't really get in trouble if you, they say something that people don't like. On uh, Sheriff David Clark, he was a sheriff. He could say whatever he wanted on Fox News, and it wasn't against some city ordinance. So that's just the difference. City is more busy. You have you're going way more calls, a lot more, a lot more work you're doing. Um, in the county, it's a lot more spread out, right? I mean, you got tons of open area, and a lot of times the county and just like highway patrol, they call them troopers. Highway patrol is a lot more dangerous because you're kind of out there by yourself, and the backup is not as quick. Um, and it also depends on what county, but but mostly. When you're all in the unincorporated area, you may be 10 miles from backup and they have to come out there and help you. Same thing with the state troopers. But municipality, police are packed into the city. When you get in trouble, man, you call that radio and you got dudes, 5, 6, 7, 25 officers like that. So that's just the biggest difference. It's also a difference in pay, so you just have to look at it on the website. Sometimes the county makes more, but but the city, the city they kind of funnel their money a little better. Let's see, Tara, thank you so much for the super chat. I bought a hat from Officer Tatum's store yesterday. What? What hat did you buy? Tara, you got to let me know what hat you bought. That's cool, man. That made me feel good, man. It's not that, you know, the beauty about, because before I had a store, people used to donate, right? They donate to the channel. And I felt like it was cool to get donations, but, but I felt like it was just kind of a one-way street where you donate because you like my content. But now you can like my content, you can purchase something on the store. So now you have an item in return that you love and you can see, you know, me do live. So it's kind of I like it a little better when people do that, because I feel like you're actually getting some as well and directly in return. Let's see. Gustavo, thanks so much for another super chat. Um, they want they don't want no smoke. I'm in Baltimore, Phoenix, not Baltimore. Oh, I thought you said Baltimore, bro. I, I'm looking at that word wrong. You said the Biltmore. <laughs> the Biltmore and Baltimore look almost like the same word. The Biltmore. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't know you lived in Arizona, bro. We got to have a meetup. Like, we got to have, I know one of my friends, 
They do MAGA meetup in Vegas. We got to have a MAGA meetup in Phoenix. What you think, baby? We should do like a MAGA meetup in Phoenix. Didn't we have one a few months ago? No, I'm saying we got to do it more on a, on a consistent basis. Oh, yeah. We got to have a MAGA meetup in Phoenix. Yeah, but anyway, I Gustavo, I thought you said Baltimore. You said Biltmore. Can I turn this hairdryer on again? Yeah, go ahead, baby. Let's see, Jeff, thanks so much for a super chat. I was so proud of that young man in that moment. I felt like he blessed. I felt like a blessing to witness. May God be with him in this difficult time. I agree, man. I don't even know why people, people should have. I feel like that that young man forgiving that girl should have gave everybody the, the right to reevaluate what we thinking about and be able to let it go. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even our family member. Y'all are more upset than he is. Let's see. Hans, thanks so much for the super chat. Let's see. Hans, thanks so much for another super chat. I, I don't know if that's a duplicate. Shout out to Excitable 101 for doing the mods today. I appreciate it, my brother. I appreciate it. Let's see. Who else on the super chat? Kenneth, thanks so much for the super chat. Love you, man. Keep up the good work. For sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Kenneth. Let's see. Are you? Hold on. You're an alpha, bro. Yeah, I thank you. I appreciate it. God made me an alpha. God don't want us to be betas. God don't want us running around being shady, betas, backstabbing each other and being cowards and corny. And you know what I'm saying? God wants us to be real men. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Jesus would be operating like some of these people operating today. Fake it in a fake it in a, a three dollar bill, you know, all of the above. Let's see, you are doing an awesome job, Brandon. I appreciate it. So when is the GOP going to the forgive the Democrats? Hey, we we forget, we trying to forgive them, but they don't want no forgiveness. They want to keep going. They don't want to even admit that they wrong. See, God, see, this is the thing about God. God can't forgive you. This this is the thing. If you don't forgive other people, he can't forgive you. They cannot let go of what Trump is doing. They can't. They, they will not let Trump go. They will not extend anything to Trump. They are putting themselves in a, in a place of unforgiveness. If that makes sense. Let's see. Is that a blow dryer? Yes. My girlfriend's blowing blow drying her hair. Did y'all see Adam Schiff uh, for brains on Northwest? I don't know. Schiff for brains. Oh, Schiff for brains. Oh, I, I see what you said. Adam Schiff lying through his teeth. That joker, these fools, let me tell you about these Democrats. And it's going to be on my show. I'm, I'm going to go ham about Amber Geiger and I'm, I'm going ham about Trump. That may be my whole show this weekend. Listen, listen, listen. How in the world, and I know that this may be within protocol, but this is a conflict of interest. How in the world does the whistleblower go to a committee of Democrats which Adam Schiff is the is the head of, and, and he seek counsel, and they guide him in how to formally do a whistleblower complaint. And you telling me that's not a conflict of interest when Adam Schiff literally lied to the American people. I, listen, let me say this. Um, Adam Schiff got up before Congress and fabricated and exaggerated and, and, and tried to make it sound like it was verbatim, but he used his own words to describe what Trump said. He at least acknowledged that he was paraphrasing and that people should have known better. I think it's wrong, but he clarified it. Nancy Pelosi was being interviewed and she said that he didn't paraphrase, that those were Trump's words. Y'all got to be smoking. Y'all got to be smoking crap. If you think it ain't going to be a landslide, I don't know what to tell you. Every time they open their mouth, Joe Biden has literally did what they've accused Trump of doing, but they have no evidence that Trump is doing it, but they have all the evidence in the world, even on video, in his own words of Joe Biden doing exactly what they think Trump did. It can't get no crazier than this stuff, man. Let's see, Tony, thank you uh, for all that you do and for what you stand for. I'm a huge Trump supporter from Chicago, for sure. I was just in Chicago. I flew through Chicago to get here. And every time I fly through Chicago, there's always a problem. Always. And everybody says that. Everybody flies to Chicago. It's either the delay, plane change, all this other stuff. We had mechanical issues. They didn't have a mechanical staff. I think I was like an hour and a half late. Let's see. My brother again. 
Ulysses, thank you so much for the super chat. So it is hard to be police than sheriff. Also, are police on a high, higher level than sheriff's departments, or is it the same? It's 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 I think that is I wouldn't say it's harder. It just depends on where you at. It depends on what state you're in. Because I don't think it's harder because there's a error like in Arizona, there is Arizona certification standards, right? And everybody has to play by the same rules across if you are in law enforcement, whether you are whether you uh, work for the the reservation in Pasquayaki or anywhere, whether you are Highway Patrol, whether you're DPS, DPS Highway Patrol, whether you are sheriff, and whether you're a municipal police department, all of those are on the same standard in the Arizona Post Certification. They have to make the same scores. They have to go to the same academy. It's all exactly the same. They have the same background checks. The difference is what do you want your experience to be? If you want running around like a chicken with your head cut off, going to all these calls, shooting stabbings all day long um municipal police is where you want to go if you want it to be a little more slow um less action than the city you can you can work for the county county has perks that cities don't you know county they let you take your car home because you can live anywhere in the county the city they don't let you take your car home in most cities stuff like that man so it, it's uh it's the same they they actually are on the same level but it also depends what state you're in um, in Seattle, King County, the King County uh, Sheriff's Department is one of the biggest departments in the country. L.A. County Sheriff is the biggest police agency in L uh, California, the biggest agency in California. And being an L.A. Sheriff deputy, that's pretty prestigious, right? They take over like if Compton, I think it was one of those cities, Watts or something, their, their local police department went out of business, so the sheriff had to take over. So it kind of depends on what state you're in. By and large, the city police do a lot more and they're a lot more, they get exposed to a lot more. So their SWAT teams are bigger. So it's kind of like the city is on a higher pedestal. All right, my, my, my lady is ready. We going to the Trump. Thank y'all for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Let me make sure I catch these super chat. Uh, Elisa, though, I think you didn't get $100 super chat tonight. <laughs> I wish you would do videos outside politics like the information videos about helping young men know the the real manhood is means a relationship. Hey, you own brother. I'm doing that. I was just talking to Corinne about that. I want to start doing more of that and get away from politics because I just feel like it, I'm pigeonholing myself because politics is like, like, right. like, <laughs> no, it's like the third thing that's most important to me. Oh. Like God is first. Um, me. Korean is is a close second. God, I don't think you heard me, did you? Thank you for Korean. She a close second, but I'm gonna do that, y'all. I promise. I'm gonna start making videos outside of politics, talking about all kind of stuff, even policing. Why should you do a ride along? That'd be a good video. Those are those are evergreens. So let me uh let me make sure I get everybody super chats and then we out. Zach, you're a voice of reason, B. You have done so much good for race relations, and you empower people. Praying for you, bro. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Honest to God, truth. I'll take every prayer y'all give. Officer Lou, my brother, my brother. What's up? Officer Lou, Korean said, what's up? We love you on the on the Instagram, man. Appreciate the content, bro. Um, couldn't get off work for YBLS. Dang, bro. And you, and you right here in Baltimore. Dang, bro. Next year, man. Next year. But we need to get you more involved, bro. We need more police perspective. I'm the only police. And you actively a police officer. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I retired. Technically. Technically, I just left. But I like to call it retirement. All right. Appreciate Excitable 101. Thank you for the mods tonight. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Go on to the Officer Tatum store. You got a 10% discount if you use the word facts. Go on there. Get you some merch. It's a great way to support the channel. A great way to support the president and support other stuff that we have on the store. I love y'all, man. I'll see y'all later. Y'all have a blessed night.